Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a video going over a game PC for $1,000. Now this is really focused to getting you some excellent 1080p performance in newer games such as Battlefield 3, Black Ops 2, and Assassin's Creed 3, and pretty much anything else you throw at it. If you guys are interested, I also have a couple other bills you might want to take a look at. So I have a $750 bill, which is obviously a bit cheaper. You do lose out on some performance and a few of the goodies, but overall you're going to get some really solid performance. And if you're looking to spend a little bit more money, I also have a $1,500 bill, which as the name implies, is more expensive, but more importantly, it's going to be a lot better, especially if you plan on doing multi-monitor gaming. To kick our build off, we're going to be using an Intel Core i5-3570K processor. Now, as far as price to performance goes, nothing can even touch this, even the more expensive Core i7s. Now, the big thing here is that it is a quad-core design clocked at 3.4 GHz, which is fine and that's great. However, this can easily be overclocked well in excess of 4 GHz in our system. As an Intel Ivy Bridge CPU based on the new 22 nanometer process, during normal usage, it's going to stay nice, cool, and quiet. However, when you need to do some serious lifting like gaming, it's going to be able to be an absolute powerhouse. For about $220, this is going to be a great start for our build. Moving on, we have the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. Now, its predecessor, the 212 Plus, was something that I highly recommended. In fact, I used one on my own build. However, this is the newer version with a slightly tweaked fin design, as well as a higher quality fan, which should give even better thermal performance. Now, when really doing some major overclocking in excess of 4GHz, it's really important to not use the standard Intel heatsink, and instead use something like this, which is going to give you a little bit better performance as far as just dissipating all that heat that you're creating. For about $30, this is going to be well worth it. For a graphics card, we're going to be using a Gigabyte GTX 660. Now, this is quickly becoming one of my favorite GPUs out there, as it really nails that price to performance curve. Now, it is slightly overclocked with a base clock of 1033 MHz and a boost clock of up to 1098 MHz, and it's paired with 2 GB of GDDR5 memory. Now, one of the cool things about this is the WinForce cooler. Basically, what Gigabyte has done is put a giant heatsink on there and two huge fans. Now, I don't think it takes a genius to say that if you get a ton of airflow on a graphics card, it's going to keep it nice and cool. And that's one of the main reasons why I like this card, as it really is a great all-rounder. For about $210 after rebate, this is going to be perfect. For a motherboard, we're going to be using a Gigabyte GAZ77X UD3H. So, long name aside, this is a solid board. Thanks to that Z77 chipset, you have full support to overclock your processor as much as you'd like, and it also does have some other cool bells and whistles. So what you're going to find is support for two-way SLI, which is great if you ever want to take another GTX 660 and upgrade your system, you can kind of improve the performance there. It also does have support for more of the standard things, including USB 3.0, SATA 3, and support for up to 32GB of RAM. For $150, this is going to be perfect. For memory, we're going to be using 8GB of Samsung DDR3 RAM. Now take a look at it, and it doesn't look like anything special at all. There's no heatsink, and it's actually lower profile than most RAM. However, don't let looks fool you at all. This is probably some of the best stuff that money can buy. So for starters, the base clocks are not bad at 1600MHz. However, where this really shines is in overclocking. You can really overclock this stuff way, way, way higher than most other kind of typical RAM, even with all kinds of fancy, flashy heatsinks. And the best part of all is that this is really cheap and only $38. For an SSD, we're going to be using a 128GB Samsung 830 series drive. Now, I'm a huge fan of SSDs. I feel like they're probably one of the best ways to increase performance on your computer, and with an awesome $1,000 bill like this, we can't pass one up. So the reason I went with the 830 series drive is really simple. It's very reliable and very fast. Sure, it might not be quite as fast as some of the fastest and newest drives out on the market, but it has been around for a little while, and because of that, it's got a really great reliability track record. For about $100, this is a great, great, great way to go. Okay, maybe, maybe only two greats, but it, it, it's good. <laughs> for a hard drive, we're going to be using a one terabyte Western Digital Caviar Black. Now, there's a reason why this is the standard for gaming computers. For starters, it's fast. Sure, maybe not quite as fast as your SSD, but it's going to give you perfectly respectable performance. And with one terabyte of storage to work with, you're going to have plenty of room for all your games, music, videos, pictures, all that kind of stuff is going to fit on there no problem for about $100. For a power supply, we're going to be using a Corsair CX600. Now, a lot of people are under the assumption that if you get a high-end gaming PC, you have to have a 1,000-watt power supply and all kinds of craziness. However, that's not the case at all. With 600 watts of capacity, this is going to be more than enough for our build as is, including all the overclocking you want to do. But on top of that, you're also going to have some overhead. So if you want to add additional hard drives, fans, LEDs, all that kind of stuff, it's going to handle it no problem. Unfortunately, this isn't modular, but besides that, there's not a whole lot to go wrong with only $65. For a case, we're going to be using a Corsair Carbide 300R. Now, I'm a big fan of this case for a few reasons. For starters, I personally do like the look. Now, of course, you guys might have different tastes and maybe you want something a little bit flashier. However, it's very clear, it's very understated, but it still looks kind of industrial and kind of cool looking. On top of that, since it is a Corsair case, you can expect solid quality, as well as great airflow, as well as plenty of room for cable management and all that kind of fun stuff. For only about $75, I highly recommend this one. 
For an optical drive, we're going to be using a Sony DVD burner. Now, like I say in all my builds, this is totally optional, so if you want, you can skip this, no big deal. However, I do like to include it as it's fairly inexpensive, and on that rare occasion when you want to listen to a CD or install something via DVD, it can come in handy. Of course, though, if you guys want to, you can feel free to skip it, or if you want, you can upgrade it to a Blu-ray drive, but if you just want to stick with the DVD drive, it's going to run you about $23. For an operating system, you have the choice between Windows 7 and Windows 8. Now, I'm going to totally leave this one up to you guys, whichever one you prefer, both will work just fine. Generally, Windows 7 is the safer choice, everything already works on it, it's very simple and easy to use. However, Windows 8 is newer, it's definitely quite a bit faster than Windows 7, and you also do have the new Metro UI, which, kind of a mixed bag, some things I like, some things I'm not such a huge fan of. However, whichever one you guys want to go for, feel free. This is going to run you anywhere between $70 and $100. So there you have it, an awesome $1,000 gaming PC. Now of course keep in mind the prices are constantly fluctuating so I will have links to all the parts listed in the description of this video. If you guys are looking for more information, feel free to check out my $750 build as well as the $1,500 builds here. If you guys enjoyed, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content. Anyway guys, I will catch you in the next one. As this is an overclocked card, that means you're going to have plenty of performance to handle pretty much any game you throw at it, including Battlefield 3 and go ahead and mount it in the back of your case and it's going to be no problem. And on top of that, of course, since it is water cooling, you're going to get some really, really nice performance out of your CPU.